I was never a lighthouse person, but there was an auction uh, that a friend of mine put me in touch with from the government. They were selling Graves Light, and I thought to myself, well, maybe I just get a free trip and go and check it out. So came out here with the other bidders. It just took my breath away, and I just couldn't stop thinking about the fact that this magnificent place was actually for sale. It got me thinking, well, wouldn't it be fun to have a little summer cottage but instead of driving two and a half hours to get to Winnipesaukee, you could have a place all by yourself about 20 minutes from home. I kind of tricked my wife. She was away and I just texted her. I said, hey, can we buy a lighthouse? And she said, sure. So I was like, well, stop asking. She said, sure. So <laughs> that's what got it going. It was really dark and dirty and leaky and disgusting when we bought it. Any historic building that's been neglected for a long period of time has a lot of challenges. But having a lighthouse that's offshore is sort of a multiplier. We spent the first year just doing masonry repairs, waterproofing. The Coast Guard had gutted the whole place, but there were little clues that were here, like there was a window sill along one window, and there was one door that was completely coming apart, but we looked at it and it looked like the original door. It was almost like some divine being gave us just enough clues to be able to fit these important architectural features back into the place. So the oil house was built with extra money they saved during the construction of graves. Had no windows, just a single story. And by the time we got to it, the roof had rotted away. It was just a shell. We decided that we would add a story to it, which is a departure from a historical perspective, but it just didn't make any sense to have a windowless room. The first 40 feet of the tower is solid stone and rubble and cement for weight so that it doesn't get knocked over in a storm. The first floor, we use it as the basement basically. So there's a water maker and there's a waste treatment system for the water and there are batteries, things like that. The next floor up is a bunk room. The third floor, we now made that the bathroom. The next floor is the master bedroom. And then the top window, they call that the watch room where the guys would just kind of hang out at night. And then the top floor, that black room that's just a drum, that was a mechanical room, but we made that into the kitchen. And then of course the lantern room is at the top. Doesn't need an explanation, it's a lighthouse. That's the whole purpose of the place, is the lantern room. I feel privileged to win this award. I know it's a difficult award to win and it's very prestigious. It's not a win for us alone. It's a win for the 150 people who worked on it as well. Probably the most exciting part of building this place is working with the people, problem solving, having them out here, staying overnight, grilling a couple of steaks, having a couple of beers after work and telling stories and waking up in the morning and just doing it again. The more you get to know it, the more you realize that it's the stories that are in that building. That's what's even more interesting than the building itself old sea stories with captains and pirates and you know German spies and everybody and and they all come together to give the place such a richness so the building is basically just becomes a container for these wonderful stories about how the world used to be.